coming up on Lakefront Live, how the Center for Mexican American Studies is celebrating Latino History Month. The latest updates on the Ebola virus and what favorite fall TV shows are back this season, right here on Lakefront Live. Hi, welcome to Lakefront Live. I'm Alejandra Guzman. And I'm Levi Rios. Last Wednesday, the Lakefront hosted an evening with Humans of San Antonio. Students got a chance to hear from photojournalist and founder of Humans of San Antonio, Michael Cirlos. Cirlos talked about the inspiration behind the popular Facebook page and how it promotes San Antonio's diversity and culture. The hidden beauties of San Antonio. I think the hidden beauties are maybe people that aren't um, being recognized as, as, as often as I think maybe they should be recognized um, f you know for being who they are as a person I think that um, one of the reasons why I like to photograph homeless people is because I want to share the other side of their physical appearance. Last Tuesday the University Ministry hosted a feast of the Holy Rosary procession. The Congregation of Divine Providence gathered at Mary's statue in front of the main building and led a procession to Sacred Heart Conventional Chapel for e Eucharistic prayer for world peace. I actually recruited a lot of the students by simply being out in the mall and telling them about this event and I could tell from their response that they really wholeheartedly wanted to do this so so that's really very gratifying that they desire to pray and they want to learn to pray the rosary. To celebrate Latino History Month, the Center for Mexican American Studies and Research hosted a special screening of Chicano, the history of the Mexican American Civil Rights Movement. The film covers the Chicano movement from 1965 to 1975 and features the Chicano land struggle, Cesar Chavez, and the Los, An Los Angeles High School walkouts. Another screening will be hosted this Wednesday at noon in Main Room 204. Popcorn and light snacks will be provided. Keeping on Latino History Month, the Center for Mexican American Studies and Research also held performance by Dr. Marco Cervantes. Cervantes is an assistant professor in Mexican American Studies at UTSA, where he researches Chicano musicology, hip hop studies, and performance pedagogy. In addition to his academic pursuits, Cervantes performs as hip hop artist, Mexican step grandfather. You know, it is a push to keep Mexican American Studies alive in colleges and universities, but then also to push to have Mexican American studies in high schools, middle schools, and elementary schools. So you've had university professors, you know, faculty meeting with teachers, you know, high school teachers, middle school teachers as well, talking about how can we get Mexican American studies in those classes um, and get students, you know, learning about Mexican American studies so important, um, particularly in this region. Counseling services will be hosting Let's Talk About Sex and Relationships every Wednesday during Community Hour in the Providence West Social Room. The meeting is only open to women and continues the message about healthy relationships. The, the sex and relationships group that we're running right now is strictly for women. Um, we set it up through the counseling services so that way it could be kind of advertised and promoted as a space, a safe space for young women on young women on campus to come and you know just talk about any questions they might have in regards to sex and relationships. Um, we know that it is kind of a tough thing to to talk about, you know, on such a small campus, a private university and religious university, and so we wanted to be able to create an environment where we could be respectful of the university, but then also respectful. Uh, you know, various viewpoints that young women might have and various questions they might have, you know, as college students in regards to sex and relationships. Counseling Services also hosts a men's only meeting on Tuesdays during community hour on the second floor of the IFCC. Refreshments are also available. Midterms are coming to end this week and fall break for a traditional session will commence. Classes will be canceled all day on Thursday and Friday so students can enjoy an extended weekend. Coming up after the break, we have the latest updates on the Ebola virus right here on Lakefront Live.
Welcome back. In local news, Jefferson High School graduate William E. Morner won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Morner received the honor for using fluorescence to extend the limits of the light microscope, which has made it possible to study molecular process in real time. Morner's second graduate at Jefferson High School go on to win the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. A federal judge recently overturned a 16-year ban on same-sex marriage in Alaska, ruling it unconstitutional. In 1998, Alaska became the first of two states to ban same-sex marriage. Alaska now joins 26 other states that permit the marriage of same-sex couples. Mexican federal police recently captured alleged Juarez cartel boss Vicente Carrillo Fuentes. The 51-year-old kingpin was detained in a discreet operation at a checkpoint in Torian Fuentes. Also known as El Vistro, was, was one of Mexico's most wanted alleged criminals, and U.S. authorities have been offering a reward of up to $5 million for information leading to his arrest for or conviction. A breach of protocol at the hospital where Ebola victim Thomas Eric Duncan was treated before his death has led to the infection of a health care worker with the deadly virus. The female hospital worker wore protective gear during Duncan's second visit to Health Care Presbyterian Hospital and has been unable to determine how the breach might have occurred. Texas health officials are closely monitoring nearly 50 people who had or may have had close contact with Duncan in the days after he started showing symptoms. Coming up next, what TV shows are back just in time for Halloween? Right here on Lakefront Live. In entertainment news, former 7th Heaven actor Stephen Collins has been dropped by his agency in wake of in an in investigation on suspicion of child molestation. TMC recently posted an alleged tape confession of the actor describing lewd acts with children ages 10 to 12 years old. Collins has now been dropped from roles in ABC's hit drama, Scandal, and the upcoming, upcoming comedy, Ted 2. Just in time for Halloween, American Horror Story returned last week with the show's record-breaking viewership. The season's subtitle freak show follows the lives of 1950s traveling freak show led by Elsa Mars, played by returning actress Jessica Lange. Also returning is AMC's the Walking Dead. The premiere picks up from last season's finale where Rick and company found themselves led to a false sanctuary inhabited by cannibals and must now fight their way out. At the box office this weekend, holding on to the number one spot for the second straight weekend was Gone Girl with $26 million coming in a close second with Dracula, untold with $23 million. The family-friendly movie Alexander and the Horrible, Terrible, No Good, Very Bad Day came in third with $19 million. The horror movie Annabelle fell to fourth place and Robert Downey Jr.'s new movie, The Judge, rounds out the top five. Katy Perry has been reportedly picked to play the halftime show at Super Bowl. 49, the big game will be held on February 1, 2015 at the University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. Coming up after the break, the latest updates on university sports. Welcome back. The girls volleyball team faced off against Southwest, where they beat the Lady Mustangs with a victory of three sets to one. The win moves the Saints to 10 and 7 overall and 6 and 1 in conference. The women's soccer team continued its unbeaten record in the Red River Athletic Conference after defeating Texas College 5-1 on Saturday night. The men's soccer team achieved its fifth consecutive win after defeating Texas College 2-1. The Saints improved to a 4-0 in the Red River Athletic Conference. The women's cross-country country team finished 6 out of 13 teams at the Incarnate Word Invitational on Saturday morning. The team finished strong despite enduring a downpour of torrential rain. The men's cross county team came in sixth place, as well as able to avoid the heavy rain as they finished up their race just as it began to drizzle. Don't forget to like our Lakefront Live Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. With elections just a couple of weeks away, there are political ads left and right. 
But it's hard to tell which ones are true and which ones aren't. Today, we leave you with what a truly honest political ad campaign might look like. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Gil Fulbright. The people who run my campaign, they've made this commercial, and I'm in it. This campaign, it's not about me. It's about crafting a version of me that'll appeal to you. A version that visits random work sites with paid actors pointing at things. A version of me that doesn't find old people loathsome or pointless. Has a conventionally attractive yet curiously still family. Listening to my constituents, legislating, these are things I don't do. What I do is spend about 70% of my time raising funds for re-election. I'd do anything to stay in office. My name's Gil Fulbright, but hell, I'll change my name to Phil Goldbright or Bill Fulbright or fill up my mouth with farts. These are the things that are important to me. And these are the fine people that finance my campaign. Now, in order to do these things, I have to stay in office. And to stay in office, I have to keep these guys happy. Now, if any of these things make these guys unhappy, well, my hands are tied. So come November, the choice is clear. Do you want another spineless mouthpiece for special interest in lobbyists? Or a spineless mouthpiece for special interest in lobbyists? I'm Philip Amalthworth Farts, and I approve this message.